Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today and this is going to be me showing you how to take a really basic scene, be able to save that scene that you're in and be able to load back into that scene whether you're in something in a main menu or something else. So in here I've got something called level 1, level 2 and my main menu as you can see in this screen down here. And we'll have a new game button and a load game button. I'll show you how to use the new game button and to be able to load a particular scene I'll be able to show you how to set up the load game button to load the basic data that we're going to save in the player preferences and I will also show you how to create a trigger that when all oh, this could be in any sort of situation where my little ball is going to go into this trigger and it's going to save where I am and then I will show you how to piece it all together write it and do it So be sure to check out the community discord, my great assets on the Unity store and support me on Patreon if you like the tutorials. So to get started all you need is as many levels as you want. So mine are just called level 1, level 2 and main menu. If you go to file, build settings you can see that I've added my levels here and if you don't add them there you'll have a problem. I have a main menu here which I've created and it just has a canvas of the new game button and the load game button and I have a tutorial which I'll link in the description to show you how to do a main menu. In my level 1 I've got this is part of the Neon Sphere pack that you can get free on the asset store which I uh, have given away for free and here's my box which is just going to be has a box collider and it's set to is trigger so when we go into this we're going to do something. So how, how do we save the scene that we're currently in or what do we need to do to do that if you really need a simple solution so we can right click in the project panel and go create C sharp and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this save controller and then I'm going to open up in visual studio and once we're there we're going to need to use a namespace so we're going to need to use using unity engine dot scene management because that's how we're going to access the actual scenes. I'm going to get rid of the starting methods that are there and in our class we'll start by writing just a non-trigger event. So this could be in an, a, a, a wake, it could be on a button press, could be on a start, wherever. So private void on trigger enter and then collide other. Then we'll say that if other dot compare tag in quotes is player. So it's going to be our little ball that moves in. We'll say We'll create a local variable for the actual scene that we're going to do. So we're going to create a string and have this as our active scene which we will have now. So then we're going to say that equals, it's going to equal the scene manager because we needed to use the scene management to get the shorthand for scene manager. Then we can say get active scene and then this is a method that we can call. Then we just add two brackets after. We can say dot name. So we get the name of the actual scene. And we just put a semicolon. And this will get the name of our scene, which we're actively in at the moment, and pass it into that local variable. Then what we can do is use player preferences to actually set that and save that. So we can say player prefs, because it's built into Unity, dot set string, because this is going to be how we save a string. So we want to give a name to the string that we're going to save. So I'm going to call this level saved. And then after my quotes, I'll put comma active scene with a semicolon at the end. And what we could do is could even write a debug.log line to show that and then write in active scene and it will tell us the name of the scene once we've gone into it. And then we can also, if we wanted, say game object dot set active is false and it'll turn the game object when we run into it. So now we've done that all in the um, player preferences dot set string. You can use set float set int and set string just allows us to save the name of our scene which was passed into this local variable which we can then use which makes it so we can use it as many times as we need to. So if we go back into our level here and we go onto my player as long as your player is tagged player I can actually go to my cube or my trigger that's going to be the thing and add the save controller there. What I can do is I won't maximize on play because I don't want to maximize so when I can move around with my little ball I'll hit that you can see that here it saved level one and if you have something on the asset store which is a player prefs editor which I've featured before you can see that level saved is level one so I have that information already saved without me even needing to do a debug but this is just to show the example we can go to our main menu we can save that other scene out here's my basic main menu and what we can do is right click create C sharp and we just call this 
menu controller as another example of something that we can do and open that up in Visual Studio. And then on our menu controller, we need to do again, we need to use using Unity Engine dot scene management then we can get rid of the starting methods and we can say that in square brackets serialize field private string and we can call this new game level so we can set this however we want then we can have a public void new game button and this is just going to be a method that we're creating so we can use the new game button in its functionality on its on click event so then we can do like we did before scene manager dot this time we can say load scene and in this case we want to load whatever the name is of our new game level so that's to make our new game button work so to make the load game button work we can just say pretty much the same public void load game button with two brackets and two curly brackets below and now we can check if we've actually saved everything before we try and load it so we don't get any runtime errors we can say if player prefs dot has key and then in brackets in quotes level saved because that's the name of the thing that we gave it before so in player preferences we can just say as has key and it checks if we have something called level saved and if we do we can say like before we can say string level to load equals player prefs dot get string this time instead of set string we use get string and we can use just as before we say level saved so we're getting that string and what we're going to do is then do scene manager dot load scene and then in brackets we'll say level to load so it's going to just fill that local variable with the thing that's saved and then we're just going to run that scene with what we've already got saved out so if I give you the example to make sure that you know this works, we can just create, let's say I add this to my camera and I add the menu controller to my camera to make it obvious. And we say that the new game level, so let's pretend that the new game level is level two and I've just written level two in there. Now, if we go to the canvas and we've got our buttons, we can select a button and we can add an on-click event by clicking the little plus. We can add whatever the menu controller it was on my camera so if i add camera then choose a function choose menu controller and we can choose that as new game button similar with the load game button we can add the camera and set the function to menu controller and load game button now as you can see i did that as an example so on my camera you can see that i'm going to load into level two but in the player preferences it has level one saved it's just to show you that it does work so now when we click play in our menu it's not maximized on play but you can see here's my two buttons if i click new game i will go into this is level two because you see it wasn't purple anymore and it has all these squares and i can't run into these so new game loaded level two for definite now if i exit that press play again and i go to my load game at the bottom and i press load game you can see that it loaded in to level one, which you can see level one at the top here, just like it was before, because we saved exactly which scene we wanted to move to. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to save a really basic string value of the name of your scene, say over into player preferences. And I do have a longer player preferences kind of tutorial, which I can link as well. But be sure to let me know what you think. Be sure to join the community discord, check out my great assets on the Unity store, and be sure to look at my Patreon if you want to support the channel. And if you have any suggestions for stuff you want to see in the future, do let me know. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.